Hello class, this is Mr. Pires. Let's talk about Julie Lopez's uh, stationary critique. First of all, she was very organized with her presentation. Everything was there. For example, the 10 images for inspiration. Uh, she's one of the few people who did this correctly and I still don't understand why people don't submit properly. Hate to be uh, yelling so much, but you know, if you don't wanna listen, what can I do? Okay, so this is the inspirational images that we have. Very good ones. You want to check out coffee places. It's good. You want to make something distinctive. You have to be careful not to do what everybody else is doing because that will look really bad for you. So her client is Jeter's, the coffee bar, and it's in Mission, Texas. They've been open for a while. This is their current logo. It's a little espresso machine filling up the cup. Cute logo. Uh, this is a business card that she made with the logo, but it was the rejected one. Same thing as well. It kind of looked like a clipboard with the wood and the logo being that way. So maybe that's why they didn't like it. And here's the rejected envelope. Now to kind of like make the logo a little more dynamic and they approved that logo. If you look at the previous logo and you look at this logo, they're quite similar, but this one has this little wave. So it makes it a little more dynamic. A thing that I think she should do is to take this area here and flip it around. Because right now she has that overlap of all these lines here. Well, here it's kind of empty. And that's easy to do in Illustrator. You know, you can just like flip it around and then put the text over it. Or you slip the text there and just flip it. And I like the dynamic of it. Because the previous logo, the original one, is very square. Well, this one, this one give me the jitters. This one, you can tell I had a lot of coffee when I have this logo. And this approved business card, just a pretty nice, very nice little thing. She had the funky script type, you know, but it's not curls, that is that overdue one. This is a whole different one, and it looks nice. And again, you can probably fix that logo by doing that, by just flipping it around. Here's a letterhead, gorgeous as well. This might be a little too big to make it actually a workable thing. You know, they have to be able to type the letters and stuff. Purchase orders, letters to customers. So I hear I think she might be more have to like do it maybe smaller. On the envelope, I had no issues. There's room here for the actual stamp. It looks very nice, very professional. And again, like some people are doing this. Here the whole address is on one line. Uh, it's short, maybe, if this whole thing, you see how it's rectangular, it could be a line over here with this other rectangle. And maybe the phone and the address here, the web address, could be made sm uh, actually smaller, or put this on the back of the envelope. I don't know if the postal service has issues about this. It might be confusing for the postal machine, the one that actually read uh, the addresses. These machines are very sensitive. Here's our own rejected logo. I love the click thing uh, and the rejected letterhead and the envelope. Uh, she went all around and she changed the logo totally. It's a big difference from here to this one. This is very dynamic. On the logo critique, I told her that maybe we don't want to use this typeface. Uh, papyrus are being used by everybody in the galaxy. There's I don't know, there's a bunch of websites talking about it, how, like, hate groups for it. I've seen it in, just in the valley, I've seen it in vans from uh, exterminators to plumbers to photography studios. If you want to go distinctive, go distinctive. Go to Fun Squirrel, Thousand and One Free Fun, get something different. Keep it readable, though. Don't go too crazy. You might put people away. See, because here you got projects and you see the typeface and then when she goes here she took it out I think she's kind of getting you know you want the logo to stay the same from place to place this is kind of funky as well it's kind of like which one should I choose you know maybe you guys can email her and tell her uh, which one she should choose I like them both this one looks a little more with the color letters and whatnot it looks something kind of like a daycare center they do this Crayola colors so you have to be careful about it I get it when you're trying to do so. And then the P from phone, the E for email, and W from the web, be careful because people might read P 
or something, you know, like Pepe Le Pew, the little skunk from the cartoons, the little skunk, you know, from Bugs Bunny. Uh, be, just be careful about it. I love the typeface. It's funky, it's useful, but again, too many colors might just mislead the people. Uh, the letterhead, again, very nice, you know, again, be careful about the size because these are working documents. And now you place another typeface. This is, I think it's Lucy that, and it's another one that it gets overused. You guys need to get out of the default typefaces and start exploring. That's what graphic designers do. That's why you're being hired, you know. It's like you, if you hire a person to make your wedding cake, you don't want them to go to H-E-B and just get a generic cake, like a Sarah Lee pound cake. You know, you, you, you pay for a wedding cake, you want something special. They hire a graphic designer, they want special as well. I see this typeface, I mean, it's a beautiful one. That's why they get overused. It's just, you want to be distinctive. And I like the little slogan, you know, everything is fine. And the envelope as well. Uh, what I'm not seeing here, oh, I guess, never mind. Yeah, she got the business card, I'm sorry. Uh, on both of them. So they're all really nice. Uh, this document is actually quite large. It was 22 megabytes. There's no reason ever to send an email so big to anyone. What you guys do when you, right before you send a document on PowerPoint to me, 22 megabytes is 22 of the old floppy disk. So all you have to do, this is so easy. I'm sending you videos about it. I keep telling you, you just refuse to listen. Just double click on the image. And once you double click on the image, PowerPoint gives you all these options about the image itself and what to do with them. You click on this little button. I know every version of PowerPoint got it somewhere else, but normally if you double click here, you're gonna see that square with the little arrows. Then you go, this is print to 20, take it to on screen 150. I'm gonna be looking at the screen. I'm gonna be printing out of them. All pictures in this file and delete the crop areas. And you click okay. And the document size is going to go down a lot. Oh my God, it's going to go down quite a lot. Uh, actually, you can't see it, but I'm looking at my computer and it went from 22 megabytes to six, six megabytes, almost a fourth of the size, uh, which make it easy to go on Blackboard. No distortion, everything looks fine. Just like her logo, they look really fine. Uh, Julie, you did a really good job. Uh, I think it was the most complete presentation from all the ones that we got. You had everything that was asked. Um, she took her chances, she took her risk. Just, she did this. If, the, if one mistake is uh, to stick to those typefaces, you know, that they're just overused. So let's get moving with those. And thank you for listening and comment on everybody else's work. That's how we're here to learn from each other and take care.